The Kraft Foods Company presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you partially transcribed by the Kraft Foods Company. Kraft, you know, makes Philadelphia brand cream cheese. The cream cheese that's been famous for quality since 1880. Delicious Philadelphia brand is so popular, it outsells all other brands of cream cheese combined. Enjoy it often. But remember, there's only one Philadelphia brand cream cheese, and it's made by Kraft. And you know, the world's favorite cheeses are made or imported by Kraft. Later on in the show, I'll tell you exciting news about the wonderful free offer Kraft is making. Well, there's no time like Christmas. Yesterday, everybody enjoyed the thrill of opening gaily wrapped packages and emptying stockings by the fireplace. And since it's the custom to drop in on friends to see what jolly old St. Nick brought... Let's go back a day and see what happened at the great Gildersleeve's house. Uh, right, George. Opening presents is fun. Yeah, I'm doing pretty good, Unc. Uh, wrapping paper, boxes, ribbon, presents all over the place. The parlor looks like a department store. Uh, when are we going to open the presents we're saving for last? <laughs> Bronco's just like a kid. He is a kid. Yeah, I sure am at Christmas. Uh, El Bronco will open the last round just as soon as Bertie gets the twins settled. This has been a pretty hectic morning for them. Uh-huh. Weren't they excited? Their eyes were so busy taking in everything. <laughs> Boy, I can't wait to open this present from Babs. Well, the twins are asleep. Let's open that last present. You were just waiting for you, Bertie. You first, Uncle Morris. Me? Yeah, all right. Well, hey, wait a minute. How about me? But, Leroy, you always wanted to open yours last. Uh, that was before he had a girl. Well? Say, look what I have. A desk set from the family. Just what I need. Yeah, try the pen, Unc. Yeah, I think I will. Red ink. <laughs> That's to use after, after Christmas. <laughs> Bertie, you open yours next. I was hoping I'd be next. <laughs> I saved the one from the family, too. Well, we hope you like it, Bertie. Yes, sir. I wonder what this can be. Uh-oh. No. It can't be. But it is. <laughs> Bertie got a genuine dyed in the wool cashmere sweater. Neat. Not bad, huh, Bertie? No, sir. Bertie never thought she'd see the happy day she'd own a genuine cashmere sweater. Now, where's the car? Here it is. Thank you. To Bertie, with all our best wishes for a very Merry Christmas. Ain't that nice? We hope you like the color, Bertie. Yes, ma'am. I like everything about it. Excuse me, I gotta go try this on. Now, Bronco, open your present. Well, I should insist that you open yours first, Marge, but I'm too anxious to see what's in this tall, round package. <laughs> You'll see. If it was from Uncle Mort, I'd say it's a bottle of water. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you kick it and see if it leaks? <laughs> Gosh, it must be important. It's well wrapped. Well, all I'll tell you is that it's something for our new house. Yeah, uh, Marge and I decided we'd be practical this year. We're giving each other something for the house. Yeah, fine. You're a very sensible couple. Well, look what my sweet wife gave me. A keg of nails. <laughs> nails? Oh, for corn's sake. Hey, Nice. Oh, thanks, Marge. Just think, Bronco. When we're in our new home, we'll know it's held together with the nails I gave you for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, the roof over our heads will be held together with nails of love. <laughs> this is sickening. <laughs> Let's get on with the presents. You know, Marjorie, shall I bring it out from behind the tree? Uh, will you, Unky? You bet. And you, you. It's bigger than I am. Heavier, too. Let me give you a hand. Yeah. Oh. There. What do you think it is, Marge? Well, it must be something for the house. I can't imagine. Maybe it's the whole house. <laughs> oh, Leroy. Yeah. yeah. 
There we are. Uh, take the wrapping off, Marge. Well, here goes. Oh, Bronco, you darling. What did he give you, Marge? What is it? A door. <laughs> A door? Yeah, our front door. Solid birch. Oh, Bronco, you were teasing me. You said we couldn't afford this kind. Oh, well, Marge. Isn't it beautiful, Unky? Well, if I was giving somebody a door, I can't think of a nicer one. So she got a door for Christmas. Come on, I want to open my present. Oh, sorry, Leroy. I guess we got carried away. Yeah, Leroy's been waiting all morning to open his gift from Babs. Oh, it's an awfully cute little package. Yeah, it isn't very big. Well, yeah, Leroy, don't be disappointed before you open it. It could be a jackknife or something. Oh, boy, look at this. A gold wristwatch. Really? Gosh, isn't that a beauty? Yeah, that's quite a gift, Leroy. Yeah. Certainly makes my old turnip look sick. Unky, do you think Leroy should accept it? What do you mean? I've already accepted it. <laughs> well, Leroy, a watch like that is a more expensive gift than you'd expect from a childhood acquaintance. Who's a childhood acquaintance? We've been practically going steady for a couple of months. <laughs> hey, I gotta go show my watch to Bertie. What a watch. That Leroy came off pretty well. Of course, you understand, Marge, I'm very happy with my keg of nails. <laughs> I know you are, darling. Well, I'm a little surprised that Mr. Bullard let Fab spend that much money on a present for Leroy. That boy has more gold in his wrist than I have in the bank. Good morning, Bertie. Morning, Miss Gillsleeve. Am I too late for breakfast? No, sir, but the others did beat you out this morning. Yeah, it's always difficult to get started for the office the day after Christmas. Yes, sir. Here's some coffee. Good. That should start me perking. <laughs> <laughs> you where's Leroy? Oh, he's over at Mr. Bullard's. They was away yesterday, so Leroy couldn't wait to see what Babs got for Christmas. You know, I wondered why Babs didn't come over yesterday. He left here at 8.56 and 22 seconds, according to his new watch. <laughs> yeah, that watch came as quite a surprise to all of us, Bertie. Yes, sir. There was a lot of surprises around here. A cake and nails, a door, and a genuine cashmere sweater. But that watch, oh, that topped them all. Well, Bertie, I'm not one to encourage expensive gifts for kids who don't know the value of money. It actually, Babs isn't to blame. It's Mr. Bullard. It is? You shouldn't have let Babs buy Leroy anything so expensive in the first place. No, sir. After all, it isn't a good idea for the kiddies to set their sights too high. No, sir. That Bullard overindulges little Babs. Yes, sir. And I think of how much that gold watch must have cost. Why, it's ridiculous. Yes, sir. Of course, it's not my problem. No, sir. <laughs> the watch does fit Leroy's wrist. If Mr. Bullard feels he has money to throw around and wants to toss a little this way... Yeah, I'll be big about it and let Leroy catch it. Yes, sir. <laughs> Is the water commissioner in his office? Uh, come in, Judge. Season's greetings, Gilda. Yeah, thank you, Judge. I didn't expect to see you around today. I came by to check on you, Gilda. Who? Why? I know you play Santa Claus every year, and I always worry about you getting stuck in the chimney. <laughs> oh, my goodness. When are you going to invite me over to see your tree, Gilday? Not until we take it down. You might eat the ornaments, you old goat. <laughs> Gilday, did you and yours have a merry Christmas? Yeah, but it was Leroy who hit the jackpot. Oh? Believe it or not, Judge, Babs gave him a gold wristwatch. A gold wristwatch? Gilday, that's the sort of thing a girl gives her uh, uh, husband. You know, I know a husband who got a keg of nails. <laughs> what? You never mind, Judge. What do you think of Bullard permitting Babs to go overboard like that? Well, Gilday, the way Babs has been raised, perhaps she doesn't know the value of a dollar. By George, I'm glad Leroy does. He'd never do a silly thing like that. I wouldn't let him if he wanted to. I don't have my eyes closed to things like that Bullard. Gilday? 
Perhaps Rumson didn't know Babs bought the watch. Come in. If Buller doesn't know what's going on, he's a real knucklehead. Gildersleeve? Hello, hello, Mr. Bullard. Morning, Ramson. Judge, Gildersleeve, whom are you calling a knucklehead? You, I call it you, you elf. <laughs> Speak up laughing, boy. No, Mr. Bullard. Speak up. Don't be mealy-mouthed. I heard you. You elf. You heard me anyway. I was just telling the judge it was silly of you to let Babs give Leroy such an expensive present. Oh? Rumson, I suggested that perhaps you didn't know Babs had bought Leroy the watch. Yeah, that's why you're a knucklehead. Yeah, I mean, Gildersleeve, <laughs> I have news for you. You do? Your Leroy gave my Babs this three-foot string of pearls. <laughs> a three-foot string of pearls? I didn't know that. Knucklehead. <laughs> Leroy must have spent all the money he made selling Christmas trees. Mr. Bullard, Babs has to return those pearls. And Leroy has to return the watch. Now, gentlemen, if you ask me... Nobody asked you. But if you... Quiet, you old goat. <laughs> well, I see my advice is unwanted. This is a conversation for knuckleheads. <laughs> Babs, hardly in their teens and giving each other expensive presents. These pearls must have cost Leroy $35 or $40. Well, by George, he'll have to take them back. Leroy! Leroy! Anki, you're shouting. You bet I'm shouting. Margie, where's Leroy? Well, I haven't seen him. Have you, Bronco? No, but if he's in the neighborhood, I'll bet he heard you. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it's just well he isn't here. I better cool off before I see the boy. What's the matter, Anki? Marjorie, look at this. Oh, what a gorgeous string of pearls. Say, what lucky young lady are going to lasso with those? Bronco, I couldn't afford these. They're Leroy's Christmas present to Babs. Yeah? You don't mean it, Unky. She gave him a gold watch and he gave her a string of pearls. Isn't that the most ridiculous thing you ever heard of? Oh, it certainly is. Oh, I don't know. What? Well, admitting that Babs is a little young to be receiving such gorgeous pearls, I wonder how they'd look on me. Now, oh, Marge... You got your door for Christmas? <laughs> yeah, it's too bad Leroy and Babs aren't as practical as you two. Well, I guess it's fun to be impractical sometimes. I've never had a string of pearls like this. Well, I've never had a gold watch like Leroy's either. Of course, you understand, Marge, honey, that I'm perfectly happy with my keg and nails. <laughs> sure, it's been a fine Christmas. Well, I'm perfectly thrilled with my door. You understand that, too, don't you, Bronco? You sure he does. Oh, you sure? After all, it's such a practical gift. Well, Marge, we're building a home, and you were the one who suggested a practical Christmas. I suggested it? And you'll have to go a long way before you find anything more practical than that keg of nails you gave me. <laughs> Bronco Thompson. No, kiddies. It was your idea to give something for the house, you and your silly budget. Silly budget? If it wasn't for my budget, our bank account would look pretty silly. You children, please. Uncle Mort, I'm not a child. Children get pearls. Yeah, but... And gold watches. Yeah, but... Uncle Mort. Do you know what Mr. Practical Bronco did the other day when we were shopping? No, but... I held up a nylon stocking to show him how sheer it was, and what do you think it reminded him of? Uh, what? Looking through a window pane that he could buy for the same amount of money. <laughs> now, Marge, wait a minute. So how should I expect pearls? Well, well why should I expect a watch? <laughs> Bronco didn't get a watch for Christmas, but he's sure getting the works. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Now is your chance, ladies, to get a free, yes, free copy of one of the most exciting recipe pamphlets Kraft has ever offered. This handy file type pamphlet has more than 20 easy to follow recipes for making delectable, melt in your mouth fudge and creamy smooth frostings a brand new way. A simply amazing way with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Just imagine, with Philadelphia brand cream cheese, you can make fudge and frostings that are perfect every time. Never grainy, never too hard, never too soft, but always delightfully creamy smooth. 
And making wonderful fudge and frostings with Philadelphia brand cream cheese is easy because there's no cooking, no testing, no beating to worry about. Just follow the simple instructions in the recipe pamphlet. You'll have luscious fudge and frosting with perfect, delicate richness because Philadelphia brand is made with lots of fine milk and thick cream. Just be sure you use genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese. When you buy, look for the Red Craft K that's on every silvery package to help you pick the real thing at a glance. Remember, genuine Philadelphia brand cream cheese is made only by Kraft, and it's guaranteed fresh. Now, to get your free copy of this wonderful recipe pamphlet, just drop a postcard to Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. That address again, Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. Hurry, right tonight. Well, the great Gildersleeve and his family had a wonderful Christmas. But the day after, complications started to develop. It began when Mr. Bullard got upset because his niece, Babs, gave Leroy a gold watch. Then Gildersleeve got upset because his nephew, Leroy, gave Babs a string of pearls. These gifts then upset Marjorie and Bronco, who had gone in for a practical Christmas. Now, guess who's on his way to Peavy's drugstore for an aspirin? <laughs> hello, Peavy. Well, hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. What can I do for you today? Give me a box of aspirin, Peavy. Very well. You're figuring up your Christmas bills already, are you? you know, I've had a bigger headache, headache than that. I just had to tell Leroy to return the gold watch Babs gave him for Christmas. My, my, that fine watch that Leroy showed me? Yeah. It seems I heard something about a string of pearls, too. Well, Leroy has to take them back to the jewelry store. That's one thing that Bullard and I agree on. You and Mr. Bullard agreed on something? At last. Well, that's Christmas for you. Yesterday, Mrs. Peavy's mother and I agreed on something. Oh, what? That it was Christmas. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You know, this problem with the kids is serious, Peavy. Just because they like each other, they figure they have to spend every nickel they have on gifts. <laughs> I, I recall when I was first smitten... I splurged a little on a gift for my light of love. You, Peavy? I'm here to tell you. I presented her with her World's Fair pillow, as I recall. Purple velvet with orange tassel. You. <laughs> her father and my father insisted that we return each other's gifts, too. And as it turned out, I let over it. What'd she give you, Peavy? <laughs> she gave me a kiss and I gave it right back. <laughs> Peavy, you're making light of this. Leroy must have spent 35 or $40 for those pearls. Well, it was his money, wasn't it? It's true. But it surprises me that our youngsters don't display better judgment. If I were a boy, I wouldn't give a girl a pearl necklace. No, I don't think you would. <laughs> and if I were presented with a handsome gold watch, nobody would have to force me to give it back. Well, no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> I'm glad you came over. Well, Leroy, I thought we should spend our last moments together with our presents. Yeah. We've got to take them back. We've got to take them back. Uncle Rumson said it had to be done today. Yeah. So did Unc. Let's keep them as long as we can. Until just before the jewelry store closes at 5 o'clock. Well, I don't want to take my watch back until I have to. Well, Mr. Peavy's is close to the jewelry store. Don't you think it'd help our morale to go there and drink sodas until 5 o'clock? Well, yeah, but... Gosh, Babs, I'm a little short of money. Huh? Well, you know how it is with a man right after Christmas. Oh, well, maybe it's better if we just sit here and suffer. Why don't, why don't we go see if Bertie has some cookies and milk? Okay. I do feel a little weak. Yeah. A man needs strength to return a fine watch like this. <laughs> Hi, Bertie. Hello, Bertie. Well, can Bertie do something for you children? Well, we sort of thought about going down to Mr. Peavy's drugstore, but 
Can we have some milk and cookies? You sure can. You can have anything you want. Yeah. Anything but a watch and a few pearls. You poor kid. You two got faces as long as Miss Marjorie's and Mr. Bronco's. What's the matter with them? Well, they got a little too practical for Christmas. I don't believe in being practical at Christmas. It isn't any fun. If you like somebody, you should show it. Well, you sure showed it with those nice presents you had to take back. We haven't taken them back yet, Bertie. We're keeping them as long as we can. I just hate to give up my pearls. I don't blame you. Here's your milk, honey. Thank you, Bertie. Here's yours, Leroy, and a plate of cookies. Thanks. Bertie, listen to the tick of this watch. Finest tick I ever heard. <laughs> That's a fine watch, all right. Tomorrow, maybe somebody else will own it. Somebody we don't even know. That's true. And some other woman will be wearing my pearls. Poor little Babs. Babs, I'm never going to have another watch. I'll just remember the one you gave me. Poor little Leroy. When I'm a debutante and all the other girls are wearing pearls and they say, where are yours? I'll say, you can't see them, but they're always around my neck. And they were given to me by Leroy. <laughs> Cookies, anybody? <laughs> I wonder if I did the right thing. In a way, Peavy's right. Leroy did spend his own money. Still, the kids have to understand that Mr. Bullard and I know best. Oh, hello, Gildersleeve. Yo, yeah, hello, Mr. Bullard. Didn't see you behind your bushes there. Well, I was just shaking off some of the snow before this hedge breaks down. Oh? And incidentally, keeping an eye out for Babs and Leroy. Well, I was thinking about the kids myself. It's nearly five o'clock. I suppose by now they've returned those expensive baubles. Yeah, too bad they weren't more practical. Like Marjorie and Bronco. Marjorie and Bronco? Yeah, they gave each other something for the new home. She gave him a cake of nails and he gave her the door. <laughs> the door? Yeah, the front door for the house. Oh! <laughs> Have they had a happy Christmas? Well, until they saw what Leroy and Babs gave each other. Oh, foolish children. Yeah. Leroy stood out in the snow for two weeks. Selling Christmas trees just to buy Babs a string of pearls. Well, I gave Babs a check for $50, and all of it went into the purchase of Leroy's watch. Except a dollar and a half. How do you know? Well, that's about what this necktie cost. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I encouraged Babs to buy something nice for herself, but she said she wanted to buy a gift worthy of Leroy. Leroy felt the same way about Babs. It was hard for me to insist that Leroy take back the pearls. I'll never forget the stricken look in Bab's eyes when I told her she'd have to ask Leroy for the watch. She looked up at me like a wounded deer. <laughs> you wonderful girl, Babs. Sweet, self-sacrificing. Stout fellow, Leroy. <laughs> yeah, he took it like a man. Braced his shoulders and said, I guess you know best, Stunk. Babs took it bravely. When I told her, she just lifted her chin, walked out into the snow, smiling. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad. They're hiding broken hearts, Gildersleeve, and, and we broke them. Why, George, I don't like the idea of broken hearts, especially at Christmas. Gildersleeve, do you think we still have time? You mean you're willing to let them keep their presents, too? It isn't quite five o'clock. They may be at our, your house. You follow me, Bullard. Follow me. Well, I, I hope they're here, Gilson. Yeah, I don't see them anywhere. Bertie! Bertie! What's all the commotion? Oh, hello, Mr. Bullard. Uh, Bertie, have you seen Babs and Leroy? Here we have to find them, Bertie. All is forgiven. They can keep the presents. That's nice, gentlemen, but you're too late. We are? Oh, no. You're too late. You're closing the barn after the horse is gone. Yeah, but, Bertie, we've thought it over. Yes, sir, they? you're too late. You're closing the barn after the horse is gone. Yeah, but... Mr. Gillsleeve, you know what you are? Yes, Bertie. That's right, you're too late. You're closing the barn after the horse is gone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, gentlemen. <laughs> Well, Bullard, 
We're too late. Yes, the horse is gone. <laughs> I'd better be going, too. Well, we've done a nice, big, fat job of ruining the kids' Christmas. You sit in Unk's chair, Bab. Thank you, Leroy. Listen, Gildersleeve. And I'll sit over here. You're still in the house, Bullard. Then we're not too late. Leroy! 19, 20, 5, 25. Leroy! Babs, dear. Oh, hi, Unk. 26, 27. Babs, what are you doing? Excuse us, Uncle Rumson. We're counting our money. Your money? Bullard, we are too late. Poor unhappy children. Who's unhappy? 28, 29? Yes, Leroy. We were broke and now we're loaded. 30? <laughs> 35? But, Babs, we were going to let you keep the necklace and the watch. We had the fun of getting them for Christmas. Now we can spend the money again. Mm, shrewd girl. Come on, Babs. Let's go down to Mr. Peavy's and have a soda. Oh, I'd love it. We haven't been downtown all day. So long, huh? Goodbye. Gotcha. Well, what do you make of that? Well, wait a minute, Gildersleeve. If they haven't been downtown all day, they couldn't have taken those presents back to the jewelers. So that's right. Where'd they get the money? Oh, hello, Anki, Mr. Bullard. Uh, uh, good evening, Marjorie. Marjorie, you're wearing pearls. They're a gift from my husband. Beautiful. Uh-huh, and he's taking me out to dinner this evening. Uh, hurry, Bronco, darling, we'll be late. No, he won't. It's only 5.15, according to my new gold watch. <laughs> well, Gildersleeve, it seems everything turned out all right. Yes, indeed. Maybe I can even borrow some money from Leroy to pay my Christmas bills. <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just a minute. Remember, ladies, write tonight for your free, that's right, free pamphlet with more than 20 exciting recipes for a perfect, luscious fudge and creamy smooth frostings you can make easily without cooking with Philadelphia brand cream cheese. Just drop a postcard to Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. That address again, Kraft Kitchen, Box 6567, Department G, Chicago 77, Illinois. And now, Mr. Willard Waterman steps out of his role as the great Gildersleeve to say, I hope you all had a happy Christmas. And with the New Year so close at hand, we want to take this opportunity to wish all our faithful friends the best of everything in the coming year. So it's Happy New Year to you all from the members of our cast. First here's Barbara Whiting. Babs. Then Gail Gordon. Robinson Bullard. Lillian Randolph. Birdie. Mary Lee Robb. Marjorie. And Dick Crenna. Bronco. Now Earl Ross. Judge Hooker. Richard Legrand. Mr. Peavy. <laughs> and Walter Tetley. You can have all the money you want at 8%, huh? <laughs> Yeah. What a boy. Yeah, folks, let's make sure that there'll be no one missing from our friendly circle next year. When you're driving, take an extra few minutes for safety's sake. And now, season's greeting from all the people behind the scenes, from our writers, John Elliott and Andy White, and our editor, Paul West, from our engineer, Leon Fry, and Monty Fraser handling sound effects, and from our producer, director, Frank Pittman, and Virgil Reimer for NBC. And, of course... These holiday drinks come to you, too, from our sponsors, the Kraft Foods Company. Their representative on this program... John Heaston and the entire family of Kraft employees. Happy New Year, everyone. Good night. You know, it takes three things to make a sandwich. The bread, then meat or cheese or egg, whatever you like best in between. And the third thing is, mmm, a touch of real mustard. For when you add a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. That is, if it's Kraft prepared mustard. There are two kinds, you know. Mild Kraft's mustard, smooth and delicately spiced, and Kraft mustard with horseradish added. Have both on hand for different tastes, different uses. Remember, when you add just a little mustard, you add a lot of tang. Get Kraft's prepared mustard. Mm -hmm. 